Hello, everybody. Welcome to Lunchtime Detroit Lions Talk, brought to you by the Belly Up Sports Network. We got three, four, no, we got five. Holy cow, five fourth round draft picks that may interest the Lions. We're going to go through those today. We got the Wall of Fame. We've got the Detroit Lions news and rumors segment, the comment cards, the question of the day that is there with Kurt. And speaking of my man, Kurt, I'm going to bring him in right now. What's up, Kurt? Hey, what up, though? Welcome to the show, people. You know who we are. We are Detroit Lions on the prowl. You're home for Detroit Lions news and rumors. Hey, let's get this thing started right now. Let's go. Everybody, welcome back to the show. And today we're going to lo- look at these five. Why do I want to say four? Because five fourth round picks. And who do you got first, Kurt? All right, I got Elijah Moore. He goes to Ole Miss or the University of Mississippi. Uh, his position is wide receiver. Five foot eight, one hundred and eighty-five pounds. Junior, uh, as a true freshman, Moore caught thirty-six passes for three hundred and ninety-eight yards and two touchdowns. As a sophomore, he led the Rebels with 67 receptions, 850 yards receiving, six touchdowns. Uh, In 2019, in the Egg Bowl, which is against Mississippi State, which I don't understand that name, but (laughs) Moore Moore drew a a 15-yard unsportsmanlike conduct for pretending to be a dog. I saw this picture uh, urinating in the end zone following a touchdown. As a result, the extra point attempt went from uh, a 20 yard attempt to a 35 yard attempt, which was missed by Ole Miss and lost 21 to 20. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. okay, more finished his senior season with a school record, 86 receptions for 1,193 yards, eight touchdowns and eight games and played before opting out before the Rebels final uh, regular season game in order to, to begin preparing for the NFL draft. Moore was named first team all SEC and was a consensus first team all American selection as well as a finalist for the Blitnikoff Award, which is the award for the nation's top college receiver. He was a consensus first team all American in 2020 as well as first team all SEC. He's probably been, uh, he'll probably be regulated to the slot receiver uh, most of his snaps uh, because of his short arms. (laughs) Yeah, he had alligator arms. It won't no. help him going against press coverage. But Moore has a legitimate game-changing ability with his speed, explosiveness, and elusiveness. Now, that's one thing that Brian Holmes said he wants players that are explosive. Same thing with uh, Dan Campbell. On top of that, he's also an excellent route runner and a scary run after the catch threat. We haven't had that in Detroit since who? Golden, Golden Tate. <laughs> yeah. And a receiver who can haul in a pass and miss uh, and miss contact. So maybe a Galladay type, type of catch type of guy. Uh, one of the top slot receivers in this year's draft, which is what we need. We don't have one right now. We would only have uh, one receiver on the roster. So <laughs> we need all the receivers we can get. <laughs> yeah, actually we do. Actually, we have two. We have two. Who's the other receiver? Uh, the one we got from the Packers. It was on IR. Oh, Geronimo Allison. Geronimo I Allison. I, I forgot yeah. he was still on the roster. Yeah, yeah, he's still on the roster. So, yeah, because he was hurt all of last year. I mean, uh, in this out. thing, I'm like, you know what? The one takeaway I have from, from Elijah Moore is, <laughs> yeah. please practice your end zone dances better. <laughs> yeah. And what the yeah. heck is the egg bowl? <laughs> yeah, Sorry. that that's the that's the um, Mississippi 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 State. Uh, robbery game. Yep, they're gonna rename that the uh, the uh, dog water bowl after. Yeah, this I fiasco. guess. I don't know. Fire hydrant <laughs> bowl. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got Cornell Powell. Uh, mm-hmm. As soon as Powell arrived at at Clemson, he was the bottom receiver of the receiver group. Oh, well, that's encouraging. <laughs> He's mm-hmm. a wide receiver out of Clemson. He's a redshirt senior. That doesn't okay. sound good either. Mm-hmm. Six foot, two hundred five pounds. His wingspan is seventy nine inches. Holy. God, that's, that's some good wingspan, though. <laughs> it's, a, 
big dude. Uh, yeah. The odds were against Powell in his quest for playing time. In his first three years, he received very little. He did not. Mm-hmm. He did play as a true freshman, but he only logged 12 receptions for 87 yards as a true sophomore. He even had even less of an impact. Are we trying to put this guy up or what? I, I mean, know. I don't know what the <laughs> Put it up at just guy? eight catches for 57 okay. yards and a touchdown. Paul's career at Clemson bottomed out in his third year. Uh-huh. Paul played just four games as a true junior, catching five passes for 63 yards. The Clemson wide receiver managed to what produce you know what, limited routes as a return man. Oh, here we go. Okay, here we go. Here we go. But regardless, <laughs> he wound up redshirting heading into 2019. Paul right. has thoughts of transferring, but he decided to tough it out with the Tigers. He came mm-hmm. back to the program as a redshirt junior, logging 15 receptions, 122 dar- yards, and two touchdowns. He was still working on his degree. Mm-hmm. He returned in 2020 for his fifth season, mm-hmm. and soon the opportunity revealed itself. T. Higgins left for the 2020 NFL draft, and okay. Justin Ross was forced to miss the uh, coming campaign with a neck injury. Ouch. Okay, now here he is. Let's go. Let's here see what go. he got now. Paul <laughs> senior year had a slow start. Well, his whole career had a slow start. So yeah, he had a real slow start for real. <laughs> but his final eight games, he put up 45 catches for 825 yards, seven touchdowns. He was averaging just 82 yards per season in the first four seasons. He averaged uh-huh. over 100 yards per game in the final eight game stretch of his career. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. There we go. Paul, no doubt, adds depth to the 21. Uh, 21 or 2021 NFL draft receiver class. He's well-sized receiver with good athletic traits. However, relative to receivers, his development is relatively stagnant throughout his career. And he only broke mm-hmm. out in his fifth season. And even then it took some times for his emergence to take root. Mm-hmm. Powell isn't as highly rated as, as a prospect as fellow Clemson wide receivers are Mari Rogers. Nevertheless, his physical traits and first and uh, team first mentality mm-hmm. serve as solid factors to bank on the, in day three range particularly from rounds five to seven so we were talking about fourth round picks and we just put a five or fifth round pick in there so that's Mm. that's great well Um, here's my deal with him i don't like this dude at all (laughs) hey he could be a special teamer that's what i hey that's what i see when i look at this guy i would not draft this guy you know, you you know late seven you know late rounder even under not in the fourth round i wouldn't yeah not in the fourth round but maybe he's a uh, 10 foot ball Maybe he's a uh, what do you call that? He's a he's an undrafted free agent or a, yeah, watch um, him come watch him come to the league and just set the league on fire after I said that on fire. Of uh, yeah, <laughs> who you got there, yeah. Kurt, for our next okay. uh, prospect? We got Merlin Robertson, which is wow. you know Merlin. I haven't heard that name since well, Merlin Olson. Yeah, maybe he yeah. could be a wizard or something and yeah. revive okay. this team. <laughs> okay, he's <laughs> he's an outside linebacker from uh, Arizona State University, six foot three, two hundred and fifty one pounds. Okay, now he got some size on him. All right. Yes, he does. He plays with some excellent instincts inside um, and it easily gets to the ball. He plays downhill, attacks the ball carrier. Now he displays athleticism to drop into coverage and also cover running backs out of out in their roots. Okay, we need that. And necessary, he's able to go and uh, he will be able to be a good core special teams player based on his aggression and fluidity uh, in which he plays the game. Okay, we need that as well. All right, his scheme fit 4-3. Arizona State linebacker Mullen Olsen's standout freshman campaign in 2018 was, uh, was just the start of the college career that got that's getting him uh, nationwide recognition. He had five sacks in his first season in college, getting 77 tackles that year with, with uh, 8.5 tackles for loss. Also, three of those uh, numbers led the Sun Devils. He also forced a fumble and a fumble recovery. Uh, he was the first ASU freshman since 2001 to lead the team in tackles. That production led Robertson to being named the Pac-12 Defensive Freshman of the Year. In 2019, as a sophomore, he had just a half a sack and three tackles for loss, but made 64 tackles. And each year, he had three passes defense and one interception in his, uh, I guess, that sophomore year. Mm-hmm. Now, the outlook for Robertson stock in 2020 is made uncertain for uh, both for the coronavirus pandemic and, and college football, which changed the defensive coordinator at ASU. Uh, Danny Gonzalez move uh, on to be the head coach of New Mexico State, while Marvin Lewis and Antonio Pierce became co-defensive coordinators. The Sun Devils, uh, yes, it said, only played four games in 2020, and in four games, uh, Robertson managed 12 tackles and one interception. Yeah, we know Pac-12 had a very uh, short, and I think Arizona State was one of those teams that did not play a lot of games. Uh, 
at all during right. the, uh, the 2020 season because of the right. Pac-12 had a very shortened season. So, I mean, you, you get some guy, he doesn't have a lot of tread on his, on his wheels because of the fact that, you know, they he had to pretty much play a quarter of a season um, in his last year. So, I mean, but he has a good motor. I mean, I looked up, looked up his stats earlier today, uh, this morning. Um, I, I would say based on what I saw from him, pretty, pretty impressive. So I would say he's one of those guys that can, that definitely could um, have some uh, good upside. Yeah. I like him actually. Mm-hmm. I think that that wouldn't be a bad pick. He may actually go earlier than the fourth round. Uh, yeah. Just, he just may. to say, uh, just to, just to, uh, I got another linebacker here too from got? the the uh, U the uh, Ohio State University. We're gonna call oh, the team down the team down south. Gotcha. Yeah, that that team that nobody else uh-huh. likes here in Michigan, but uh, maybe a few. Uh-huh. He's an inside linebacker. He's 6'3", 241 pounds. He's a senior at the Ohio State University. Barron was a five-star recruit coming out of high school as a true Mm. freshman at Ohio State in 2017. He played 12 Mm. games and had 14 tackles, which Mm. to me is not that good. Uh, He started on three games. uh, Oh, he only started three of 12 games in his sophomore season, but he got 24 Mm. tackles and a sack, so that's a lot better. Okay. Now, go, again, yeah. he again played in 12 games his junior year in 2019, finishing with mm-hmm. 43 tackles and five sacks. Boy, he comes along every year, doesn't he? Mm-hmm. In 2020, Browning played seven games, 29 tackles and a sack. So pretty, yeah. pretty good. I don't, I don't yeah. mind that for an inside linebacker. Those are pretty good numbers. Yeah, because you know what? You know, because they up. had that they had that shortened game, shortened season in Ohio State. Yeah. Before they making did. the uh, the college football playoff, yeah. They did. And the thing is with that, mm-hmm. he needs to be making more tackles than, than that, in, in mm-hmm. my opinion. But that's just me. Yeah. The scheme fit is a gap control defensive front to keep him clean on the B levels, mm-hmm. uh, front diversity to allow him to, uh, you know, roam around free, blitz mm-hmm. off the edge, do what he needs to do instead of him trying to control the gap and control the flow of the game. Uh, mm-hmm. Difficult for him. Uh, yeah. Browning is not is is at his best when he's not asked to anticipate the defensive flow. Just like I said, mm-hmm. it is instead charged with making reads in real time, finding the football, and that's what he's good at. Mm-hmm. And using his high level athleticism to close the space suddenly to rally. He, you know, he kind of reminds me of a Jared Davis. Davis, type. that's what I was thinking too. Jared yeah. Davis. Yeah. If a team can yeah. feel comfortable with featuring a role, a similar role inside, he's physically capable of fulfilling an inside linebacker role. Length, mm-hmm. burst, and tackling. God, we need tackling. Yeah. Our uh, Browning's best features, and it's up to you to figure out how to best showcase them. Yeah, I, mm. I think the Lions could use that, but I think they have that in Jared Davis, and I would love well, to see him re-signed. Well, yeah, I, I will, yeah, I would definitely go <clears throat> go with a, a more experienced Jared Davis who was being underutilized last year. Well, the last couple of years under Matt Patricia. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'll argue with that as well. All right, last guy we have, we have Isaro Mukamua. I think that's how you say that. Something uh, like that. <laughs> yeah. Defensive Good back luck, out of the University. <laughs> hey, you know, I'm sorry if I butchered your name. All right, <laughs> defensive backs out of the University of South Carolina. He played for the Gamecocks. Uh, six foot four. That's pretty big for a defensive yeah, back. That's two hundred five pounds. He guys, um, that guy's pretty big. Okay, all right. Israel played in all thirteen games uh, as a true freshman. Seventeen tackles, two tackles for loss, one interception, one pass broken up, and a forced fumble. Uh, he was named the second team All SEC as a sophomore after finishing the season with fifty nine tackles, four interceptions, and thirteen pass breakups. At twenty twenty. He played in five games due to a recurring groin injury. He recorded 10 tackles and two interceptions on November 17th, 2020, following the dismissal of former head coach Will Muschamp. Uh, he opted out of the remainder of the season to focus on prepare, um, preparing for the NFL draft. All right, South Carolina used Israel in a variety of ways, including as a wide receiver in the slot and as a deep safety in the box. While he primarily played – as an outside corner, he does have appealing traits that make him a versatile option at the next level and can serve as a matchup neutralizer against tight ends and big slots. Uh, he is long, athletic, and, and rangy, and physical. He does well to stay lever and zo- leverage in go- zone coverage and has good ball skills. And he has an aggressive style driving forward. Ideal role, outside corner that is situationally played in the slot and has appeal as a slot safety and positionless sub-package defender. 
uh, he kind of reminds me of um, what's the guy that we, we brought in this year? J. Ron Curse. J. Ron Curse. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing, me that. but I couldn't think of his name. Wait, and by the way, Kurt, I, I we don't really intentionally make you pronounce these names on purpose because the last time, I mean, he is the king of having to pronounce bad, really difficult names. So I give it up, give it up for uh, yeah, oh man, Kurt, man, had, I'm crying, having a, baby, I'm having a hard time, dude. Yeah, I'm having it a hard... wasn't on purpose though. But uh, but J- he reminds me of that J. Ron Curse, but with he better does. cover skills, but with yeah. better cover skill because. The guy, guy had a, uh, a lot of interceptions in college to have that size and range. He can play all over the de- uh, the back end of the defense. Uh, yeah. He can play on a slot. He can play against tight ends. So he's big enough. I mean, he's big enough yeah. for safety for sure. He's one of those guys. He can fall back. He'd be a definitely good compliment to uh, Tracy Walker. I kind of like him. Mm-hmm. And, and so, yeah, if he has some speed to him, uh, we'd we'll, we'll have to see what he runs in the 40. But I'm yeah. kind of I kind of like this guy. All That's right, the, now we're going to go to the Wall of Fame, and the people on the Wall of Fame today is Detroit Drew with a Detroit Lions on the Prowl membership, and then mm-hmm. Nomish J has the uh, the Members Plus membership, and shout out to Dr. Detroit. He has the gold membership, and we really appreciate you guys. If you want to do that, just uh, check out mm-hmm. our channel and click the Join Now button for some more information on how you can become a member here at Detroit Lions on the Prowl. Yes, and now, definitely. And now, and mm-hmm. now. <laughs> having fun today. Now we're going to go into the Detroit Lions news and rumors segment. Mm-hmm. We talked about this a bit yesterday, but we're going to uh, make sure everybody understands how this all works. So Romeo Aquara's contract officially voids. So he is now a free agent. We had reported on here before that he was a restricted mm-hmm. free agent, but in his contract, uh, there was a clause. So let's 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 get into that real quick. Mm-hmm. Friday marks five days since the 2021 Super Bowl ended and the playing portion of the 2020 season. This also mm-hmm. means that Detroit Lions and def, uh, defensive end Romeo Aquara is now an unrestricted free agent. Aquara's contract he signed with the Lions in 2019 featured a clause that automatically voided the 2021 season mm-hmm. effective five days after the conclusion of the Super Bowl. It was mm-hmm. done to space out the salary cap hit when the team signed him to a contract extension in March of 2019. As a result of the voided year, the Lions will take on a 900000 cap charge into 2021 due to mm. the signing bonus proration which really mm. sucks and i to be honest I'm, I'm having a hard time understanding why they let him go to free agency and didn't work something out in the yeah in the time i wish they would have did that it doesn't make any sense whatsoever to me nah. but aquara led the lions with 10 sacks 11 tackles for loss in 2020 he was mm. the only detroit player to top three sacks mm. or six fifth tackles for loss yeah, that, that's crazy. That, it's one yeah, of our best players. Why are we? It makes no sense. Yeah, you know what though, and and I'll and it's no. What do you call that? It's um. It's no hit on Brad Holmes, and and the reason I say that is because he they're still kind of in that evaluation process. So right. you right. know, so I really don't blame the new guys coming in. So you right. know, they had a lot of stuff to get to get going. You know, but um. Hopefully they can get something worked out with him. I still, hopefully he stays uh, in Detroit so he play with his brother. I, right. I, I'm hoping that's a selling point for him, you know, just because of the fact that uh, we, we want him so. back. I mean, I I don't <laughs> I don't like players in Detroit getting to free agency because they get to see nah. other places. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I, you know what? I, I would say his most um, productive years has been in Detroit. You know, coming over from um, from the Giants. Yeah. So. That's true. Oh. And now, and hopefully, now, oh, go ahead. Yeah. And hopefully he can, uh, you know, the, the prospect of playing along with the side of his brother again and uh, with the new regime coming in, you know, with uh, Aaron Glenn and Dan Campbell, Dan Campbell. Dan hopefully, Campbell. <laughs> hopefully that, that's a good selling point for him and he can go ahead and expand his role and uh, re-sign with the Lions and, and become that, you know, that pass rusher we need because um, we don't – we don't need to lose pass rushers. We need to gain them. We need to keep Absolutely. the ones we have and get some more. We, right. we need to keep the only one we have. Okay, the so only one we have. the name of the name of the game here is Detroit Lions news and rumors, and we've got a big whopper of a rumor now. Yeah. So go go ahead, Kurt. What is that okay. new rumor on uh, Kenny Galladay? 
Rumors suggest that the Lions have made a decision on Kenny Galladay. According to a rumor floating around, the Lions are expected to use the franchise tag on Galladay. If the Lions do use the franchise tag on Galladay, as suggested, expect it to be for uh, in the area of $16 million, uh, for the 2021 season. Now, this is something that will be new in Detroit. I don't, I don't, I don't think I've ever remember the Lions using the the um, the franchise tag. They haven't. They didn't under uh, Quinn. I think they did before, but I, I under don't Mayhew? think they did. I think they it's did. It's been under a while, him, and I think it was. Uh, I could be wrong about this. Uh-huh. Yeah, I don't want to even speculate, but I don't, I, I, I don't remember. I thought there the, was one, and I thought it was a defensive end, the one that went to Seattle, but I don't remember. Oh, uh, so they sure. were, yeah, I thought they franchised him for one year. They may. I have. could be wrong. I could be wrong. Our research guy will look that up and make sure that I'm wrong. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we had uh, JJ Watt leaving the Texans. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the odds that he lands with Detroit, I think, are very small. But on As Friday morning, mid- Texas, the Texas Disney. star defensive end, <laughs> J.J. Watt, took to social media to share that he had met with ownership and asked for his release. He says, I'm done. Just like uh, just like their quarterback. Nobody wants to play there. Uh, it's almost like a Detroit situation. But mm-hmm. now we're getting better than them. <laughs> USA mm-hmm. Today recently listed 10 organizations that could be the potential landing spot for the veteran defensive lineman, and Detroit was mm-hmm. not on the list. <laughs> well, go figure. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. He's not going to want to come from one situation that's rebuilding to another situation that's rebuilding. But anyway, among the teams that listed were the Buffalo Bills, the Baltimore Ravens, the Chicago Bears. And I, God, I, why do I think he's going to Chicago? Why do I have that sinking feeling that that's uh, I don't know. Up? I don't know. Cleveland Browns, Green Bay Packers. Oh, there, there you go. There, that'd be perfect. LA Rams, Pittsburgh Steelers. Mm-hmm. Although he told Pittsburgh no, from what I understand. Yeah, for for what I hear, he's telling Pittsburgh no. I think he wants to let his brothers have their own shine out there. Yeah, I agree with that. Seattle Seahawks, mm-hmm. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I could see him go to Tampa. Uh yeah. Tennessee Titans and the odds of JJ landing in Detroit seem very slim. I'm saying yeah. there's zero. <laughs> Absolute okay. zero. We're yeah, not absolute this guy. zero. Nothing. Yeah, I don't think so. Oh, the, the last time, according to Tim Twentyman of DetroitLions.com, that the Lions used a franchise tag was in 2018, which wasn't very long ago. Um, right. Uh, on Ziggy Anson. Oh, so I knew it was a defensive end. And I was, was thinking, okay, it was. It was the other one that went oh, to okay. Seattle, Ziggy Anson. <laughs> yep, the other yeah. one that went to Seattle. Yeah. Okay, yeah, cool. I mean, let's let's get into your comment cards. What do you have to say about the video on Friday? Uh, we got Geo Raider. He says, I'm not sure if the O-line reds, uh, rotation, God, that was an awful thing, was a product yeah. of the last regime and not necessarily an indication of talent or personnel. I, you know, I don't know what they were doing that for. I, I, I think don't. it was dumb. I think it was something that, you know, oh, our, our defensive line gets tired. So maybe we should try this on the offensive line too. Yeah. I never got that. I, I didn't like it because all. it doesn't, it doesn't create that uh, mm-hmm. like synergy between the guys. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, it it's takes a while for an you, offensive You need line that gel. You need that gel. You don't need yeah. to be rotating those pieces out. They're not like a defensive line. No, it's, it's, it's not the same thing at all. Nah, you but don't they're do that. experimenting on being stupid. Okay, yeah. I think that's All out right. of here, though. I do. Yeah, Rick uh, Rick Woods says uh, Quincy Roche uh, would be okay as an outside linebacker in the three four. I don't know what defensive lines are going to use or even mix it up a bit. I guess we will know uh, by what players that they keep, sign or draft for the edge or uh, or at the outside linebacker position. The uh, Aaron Glenn, uh, he definitely said. Whatever players that they have on the roster, the is not going to be trying to fit the players to the scheme. It's to fit the scheme to the players and to, yeah. and to maximize their uh, their talent. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. I know the rumors are a three three five right now based on the talent, but of course we have free agency and the draft coming up. So who knows? By the time we get to camp, who knows what we're going to be running? <laughs> Yeah, I, I think we're going to stick with a three-three-five this year. It's not a huge overhaul for the defense, and it's a defense mm-hmm. he's familiar with. So I think that's what we'll run now. But I got a sneaking suspicion we'll change over to the four-three again in mm-hmm. a few years. I, I think that's where we're going to be headed. But we'll see. Mm-hmm. I, like you said, we'll see with the free agents that we sign and the draft picks that we get where mm-hmm. we're headed. We'll we'll see what what's going to go on with that. Mm-hmm. 
Zach J. There are so many teams this year with uncertain futures at quarterback uh, that I think you should be able to trade back if somebody like Trey Lance or Fields is there at seven. Um, the only I, thing about that that we would be a target for other teams is uh, Cincinnati. Cincinnati yeah. picks higher. Justin mm-hmm. Fields might be there, and pe- they might want to move up to that spot. There's a couple other teams, too, that don't need a quarterback – that may be looking to trade out as well. So you have to see what the competition is. You have right. to see how far down uh, we would go. There's a rumor with uh, Washington that it would be mm-hmm. a first round next year, or first their 19th pick overall and like a fifth round this year or something like that. Yeah, because that that's one team that's looking for a quarterback. They, they just don't have it. I don't even see Alex Smith, to be honest with you. I know he won't come back for the year. I don't see him as a long-term answer at quarterback in Washington as you know, I just don't see it. Yeah, I don't either. They could yeah. wheel them out there for a while, but I'm not sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Prop yeah. them up with a dolly or something. I don't know. I mean, the guy has to I mean, he, I love his story, but, you know, I the guy too. has to have a brace to even pick his foot up. Right, right. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, Sage Roberts says, started watching a couple of weeks ago. Love the content, guys. Let's freaking go Lions. You know, we're going to go say the other word. Uh, and <laughs> nothing but blowing kneecaps off all season you know what wow. sage we appreciate that we're gonna be biting some kneecaps off i hope so i you hope so saying? too i hope so <laughs> we're gonna be a team that's gonna be tough to deal with i can tell you that much it might not be right away but it might not be winning a lot but we're gonna be entertaining <laughs> we will be entertaining and those press conferences i can't wait that is Ooh, gonna be the funnest wait, man. stuff it's man be fun <laughs> mike and chris g friends of the show with Christian and bevel gone Mm-hmm. and they're crazy O-line <laughs> rotations with them. Yeah, we, we already talked about this a little bit. Yeah. We may be okay on the right side. If Big V can't stay on the field next season, eat the hit. Mm-hmm. Quinn knew nothing. Same mm-hmm. money uh, they paid Big V. Could have kept uh, Iron Man and Graham Glasgow on the O-line. Mm-hmm. Uh, third rounder, give me another linebacker. I, You know, that's interesting to me. They could have kept Graham Glasgow and not had Big V come in. I actually think that would have worked better. We would have had a backup center. We had a guard that was established already. And Think about that. It, Gra- it, Graham Glasgow playing one guard and Jonah Jackson playing the other. Then you got Ragnow at center. And all, now all you need is the right tackle. But now we need a guard and tackle now. But yep. I just even, I, I just think that was an absolutely stupid thing that they let him go. Just Because even Crosby plays – he plays well for us wing tackle. I mean, you know um, – Yeah. He played yeah. better than Big V. Uh, yeah. That is, that's not that's, that ain't saying much. But all right, Philip. It wasn't difficult. Last one, last one. Philippines on the man says, "Here's a thought: the Lions keep saying that they are building for two years out. Based upon that theory, uh, what do you think about trading out of the first round, first three rounds to build up draft capital for 2022? Uh, we are not going to do well this year anyway. Our team could easily get a five a top five pick next year." That coupled with all the acquired draft capital give us a boom for our buck. Well, a lot of boom for our buck. Instead of drafting uh, for this year, why not continue to keep our eyes on the prize for 2020 and 2022 and 2023? Well, you have to have some players on your team. I'm not saying that you can't. Okay, I don't. I wouldn't look at trading out of the first three rounds this year. I don't know about that one. Okay, the first round, yeah, but the second and third round, I'm not sure about that one. I've heard so. this and a couple people have said it and I think it's, I, I think it's stupid. I'm just going to say the facts. I don't, I don't think this is a bright idea, but I've had like somebody else say this in the comments as well. Mm-hmm. Just sell off all your draft picks this year. Don't make one draft pick this year and then get all these picks for next year. So we'll have three well, first you, rounds and all you this gonna have on your stuff. roster. If you do that though, are you going to have, have to have time to develop people though? Too, yeah, you have to. And I think, I, I think the problem with this is that if you have nobody coming in as a rookie this year, we, we don't have any building blocks to start the rebuild. I mean, we have to start through yeah, the draft. Are we going to start somewhere. through the draft this year? I We got to. I don't yeah. I don't understand this thought. Yeah. Um, I know what they're saying. Oh, we'll get all these draft picks for next year. Well, why is next year better than this year? That that I don't know that in the first place. Yeah. And then the, the next thing is, who do you have for this year? Mm-hmm. I know yeah, we I, I know we think that this year's going to be bad, but I'm going to say there's I'm, we're going to go into this. I think it's Wednesday this week, mm. where um, or something. But the the thing is, is I don't know. I think we're actually trying to compete for next year, and I've got, I've got a couple of things reasons why I think that. 
And mm-hmm. so I'd hold the phone on that saying that we're just going to be washed out for this next year. I, I would, I would, uh, the fact that they're going to friend, if they do franchise Kenny Galladay, mm-hmm. that tells me that they want to compete this year yeah. coming up. Yep. That, that and definitely that, is, is a key for that. And because you just don't franchise the t- tech of guy to keep him around for, if you're not trying to compete. Right. And I, and, you know what? They all said, hey, we're not going to be a team that's just going to try to rebuild. We're trying to retool mm. and we're yep. trying to be competitive each year. Every one mm. of us, me included, have mm. thought, okay, the next season is kind of a throwaway year, but I don't mm. know that to be true anymore. So we'll yeah. see how that goes. We may not have the talent to do it. I don't know, mm. but we'll see what they do in free agency. We'll see what they do in the draft coming up because we got a lot of places that we need to plug holes if we're going to compete this year. Yeah, definitely. Um that's why I said that's what I said I can look at okay drafting back uh trading back out of the first round to get some more draft capital in those middle rounds. And we all know that Brad Holmes can work magic in the middle rounds because look, he hadn't had a first round draft pick in like six, seven seasons. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and and he has got a plethora of first round draft picks in the mm-hmm. next three years. So I mean, we'll see what he mm-hmm. does with all that stuff. And hey, they could be traded to get players are disgruntled on other teams. I, I'm just saying we could rebuild mm-hmm. this rather quickly. If mm-hmm. we do use some of that draft capital to, to get established players, you just don't know what they're going to do, but that was a theme yeah. over there in, in, in LA. So we'll see how that Definitely. works. Mm-hmm. Question of the day today, what fourth rounder interests you, mm-hmm. or maybe there's one we did not cover, put them in the comments below. That's kind of the question of the day. It's kind of a thing where, Hey, we went over five people that we could draft one. I wouldn't draft in a million years, but anyway, yeah, um, nah. <laughs> he's an undrafted it free, is what free it agent. is. He's an undrafted free agent. Uh, yeah. 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 It is what it is. So, mm-hmm. uh, what do you guys think? What do you think? I think about a fourth rounder. Give me your suggestions, and then mm-hmm. we will cover them at a later time and a later show. Because we have a couple of people that have uh, mentioned a couple other guys to us, so we're going to do some profiles on them soon. All yep. right, and now it's time for my favorite part of the show: the dessert with Kurt. All right, big number ninety-five is making another appearance in the dessert. PFF names Romeo o- Oquara the most improved defensive player in detroit actually he's the wow. most improved player in detroit just period period um, he just had a solid 2020 season you know he led the league uh, excuse me led the lions in, with 10 sacks uh which was top 10 in the league actually was number 10 so he had 10 sacks that made him the 10th ranked uh pass rusher in the nfl for sacks so uh do, during their analysis for all 32 teams uh the 25 year old Promising defensive end was the Lions' most improved player of the year for the 2020 season. Sounds like a good dessert to me. Yeah. <laughs> but and he said, unfortunately, he said it looks, for his brother. <laughs> it looks like, unfortunately, yeah. I don't know if we're going to keep him or not. We'll see how I it goes. So mm-hmm. I do hope we do. If we plan on trying to win this year, that's a guy you need. It is really a guy you need, I think. Okay, appreciate everybody rocking with us today. This is coming to the end of the show. Uh, You know, um, we are very much appreciative of our members. We're very much appreciative of people that are listening to us on Spotify and elsewhere. Take us, you know, the show on the go. Uh, everything that you're doing for us, we really appreciate you showing up, showing out in the premieres at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and that will happen today So and all throughout the week. So really appreciate each and every one of you. And for the very end of the show, I'm going to throw it to my man, Kurt. Hey, you know who we are. We are Detroit Lions on the prowl. Your home for Detroit Lions news and rumors. And as always, join the family. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, watch the videos, comment on the videos, like the videos, share the videos. All of this helps us get this content to more Alliance fans just like yourself. And as always, you can check us out right over there on Beliosports.com. You can check us out our page over there. You can get the audio link to this show. Um, and you can listen to that audio on what? On some Skull Candy headphones. Click the link down below and get an amazing deal on some great audio gear from Skull Candy. It is definitely a a must have and a portion of the sales on that link help us grow this channel. And we know we do it for you because guess what? You are our family. We don't have fans. We don't have viewers. We got family. 
And that's what we preach right here on Detroit Lions on the Prowl. Hey, happy Monday, people. I hope everyone had a very good Valentine's Day. We really appreciate that. Hey, and please, please celebrate your history this month. It's not, it's one thing you all know that, you know, February is Black History Month. So, so take some time out and learn some stuff about your American history. Hey, you know what you need to do, whatever you do in life, you got to boss up, ball out and be the best version of you that you can be. For my man, Jim, right here on Detroit Lions and the Prowl, this is Kurt Steele, and we will holler at you real soon. Thank you.